Vanessa parked in front of the entrance to the building. The place was not very convenient, but the girl was returning from the store and there were heavy bags with purchases in the trunk, groceries, new outfits for a trip, and gifts for loved ones. Tomorrow was the long-awaited wedding day. Soon she and William would be a real family. Vanessa had no doubt about her decision. She had never met such a loving, reliable, and determined man as her future husband, and she felt safe and comfortable with him. During a couple of years they had been together, Vanessa and William had been inseparable, and tomorrow they would start their happy and peaceful family life. The day promised to be interesting and very beautiful. They invited many guests from both sides, relatives, friends, and colleagues. The newlyweds rented a luxurious restaurant and hired the best master of ceremonies and the most popular photographer in the city. William hinted that he had prepared something fun, but no matter how many times Vanessa asked him to reveal what it was, William stubbornly kept his secret and only smiled. She assumed that William had invited some celebrities, perhaps singers or artists. Her fiancé loved to make nice surprises. Vanessa put the heavy bags on the floor. At that moment, a tramp approached her, or a man who looked like a tramp, uncertain age, dirty face, wearing some rags, stinking. Vanessa grimaced squeamishly and wanted to pick up her bags and leave. But the stranger suddenly stopped her in a hoarse voice. Dear, wait, I have a letter for you. What? The girl replied. Vanessa looked at the strange man with surprised eyes, and he held out a folded piece of paper to her. The girl did not want to take this letter. She even wanted to turn around and quickly leave, but curiosity prevailed. Vanessa took the letter. That's it. I've done my job, he reported and walked away. Vanessa stared at the stranger. Suddenly, she realized something. Wait, she shouted. Who asked you to give this to me? The man didn't turn around, but quickened his pace, almost ran. She wasn't going to chase him, because today Vanessa wore high-heeled shoes. It was impossible to run in such shoes. There was an internet link in a green felt-tip pen on the crumpled paper. It looked suspicious. Vanessa knew since her childhood that it was not a good idea to follow strange links, but the way of getting this address was very intriguing. So at home, she typed it into the search line and pressed enter. The link led her to the personal page of a girl on a social networking website. According to her profile, her name was Christine. A plump, red-haired pretty girl, Vanessa decided to look at her pictures, and there were a lot of them. The girl obviously liked to take pictures. Suddenly, the bride's heart began to race. In one of the pictures, the stranger was in a cafe hugging her fiancé, William. He was wearing the shirt Vanessa had recently given him, so they took this picture not long ago. William and Christine didn't look like just friends. Their hugs and looks were unmistakably indicative of romance. In the same shirt, the guy took a picture with Vanessa, and he even hugged her the same way. Vanessa kept scrolling through the pictures of the red-haired Christine. Her fingers turned cold. There were many pictures of her and William, romantic and tender. The caption said, Vacation with the love of my life. Made for each other. He's the best. And so on. But how did William manage to lead a double life? And most importantly, why would he do that? Was Vanessa so naive that she had not noticed his deceitfulness and hypocrisy? The world was falling apart before her eyes. The most reliable and beloved man in Vanessa's life turned out to be a liar and a traitor. The album Vacation finally finished her off. William was on vacation in Cyprus with this girl, and the dates of the pictures were the same as his business trip to the capital. He told her he was going to conclude a contract with new clients and even invited her with him. 
but Vanessa refused. She was busy at work, the end of the month. Her boss would not let her go. And so, apparently, her future husband took his girlfriend with him not to be bored alone. Except not to the capital, but to Cyprus. Probably he did not need to go on any business trip. He had initially planned to go on vacation with his mistress. He knew that Vanessa wouldn't go. So he made up the story about the capital so as not to arouse suspicion. What an ingenuous bastard. Vanessa felt unwell. How could she trust him? She wanted to throw all his stuff out of the apartment. She also was worried about tomorrow. They'd invited so many guests. But there would be no wedding. A secret well-wisher revealed the truth to her just in time. Vanessa took another look at the album of this sweet couple's vacation. It hurt her. But something caught her attention. The girl was looking at the romantic pictures and couldn't figure out what was wrong. Suddenly, she realized what was wrong. A bruise. None of the pictures of William's face showed a bruise. He hit his face on one of the machines at the gym. He was so worried about how he was going to go to an important negotiation with that bruise under his eye. The guy really didn't look good. He looked like a tramp. Vanessa picked up a concealer for him, but even the makeup couldn't hide it. In the photo from Cyprus, Vanessa could not see anything like that. The girl sighed heavily several times. It was just a negligible trace. Christine could have removed the bruise with Photoshop, or the quality of the pictures did not allow her to see such details. But Vanessa had to take one last chance to find a rational explanation for what she saw. She could cancel the wedding and cause a scandal later that night. But now, before it was too late, she had to call her classmate, Michael. He was the best computer guy Vanessa knew. He was the only one who could help in this situation, especially since Vanessa had invited him and his girlfriend to a party tomorrow night. I can't believe that, said Michael, listening to Vanessa's confusing story. I'll try to find out something through my channels, and I'll be there at lunchtime. But don't do anything. You can do something stupid and make things worse. Vanessa didn't take any action, even though it was very difficult. She wanted to call her fiancé, tell him everything, and listen to him try to justify himself. Time dragged on endlessly, and Vanessa felt sick. It was not the way she had imagined the day before her wedding. If it weren't for that unfortunate note, she'd be making snacks for tomorrow, right now. Because her hairdresser, makeup artist, and a few friends who promised to help her with the preparations will come to her place by 7 a.m. Eh, it'll be so hard to cancel it all. And then what? How can Vanessa trust men now? The best man on this planet turns out to be just a hypocritical traitor. Michael arrived at lunchtime, as promised. He entered the apartment with a mysterious smile. Probably, he didn't care. It wasn't his life that was ruining right now. Perhaps her situation really looks ridiculous. You look like hell, he said as he looked at Vanessa, pale and disheveled. I'd like to see you if you or Audrey did something like that. Something like what? I don't know what is going on yet, but your fiancé really was on a business trip in the capital during the period you told me about. Michael took the laptop and showed Vanessa, who did not understand anything. Pictures and videos from surveillance cameras of hotels, office buildings, and restaurants in the capital city. William was captured everywhere. It was all in the capital. There was a conference going on there at the time, and lo and behold, look at this. William is captured in all the photos and videos. No mistresses around, just men in expensive jackets all around, Michael muttered. But what about those pictures? said Vanessa uncertainly. Show me those pictures again, Michael demanded. The girl obediently clicked her mouse on the screen. The boy looked closely at the pictures. In fact, the dates show that the pictures were taken at the same time that William was in the capital. But he couldn't have been in two places at once. Could he? 
and William had no other opportunities to spend a week in Cyprus. Not counting the business trip, he was with Vanessa every night. Michael pulled out a flash drive, installed some program on Vanessa's laptop, and checked one of the pictures. That's what I thought. It's photoshopped. Very professional work. Usually I can determine by eye, but in this case, I had to double check it. It's a fake, he said. So someone decided to tear us apart before our wedding? Vanessa still couldn't believe her happiness. It looks that way. Someone really doesn't want you to get married. We have to figure out who is doing this and why. Now let's find this redheaded girl's real profile, because this profile is definitely fake. With her picture, Michael quickly found the stranger's real social media profile. Her page looked much more modest. No vacation pictures, just a few pictures from the holidays. Some of the pictures showed the branding of the city's printing house. Apparently, your femme fatale works at the printing house. No wonder the pictures look so much like the real thing. Probably some professional designer worked on them, the guy muttered. I want to talk to her so I can be sure, Vanessa said. I have to be sure. I understand, Michael nodded. No problem, let's go. They might not let us in without my badge. Besides, I'm curious about what's going on. They saw the red-haired girl near the print shop entrance. She was returning from lunch, surrounded by several colleagues. Vanessa called out to her. Christine turned around, saw Vanessa, recognized her, and turned pale. She said a few words to her colleagues, and they went on without her, while Christine was waiting near the entrance. She looked confused and very unhappy. What does that mean? Vanessa angrily showed her one of the printed pictures with William. Why did you create this fake profile? Don't you have any idea yourself? Asked Christine angrily. I don't understand what he sees in you. Girl, let's get to the point, Michael demanded. Tell us everything. You have already made the bride nervous before the wedding. Now we'd like to know why you did it. I'm not going to tell you anything, Christine grinned bitterly and was about to leave when Michael grabbed her by the arm. He showed her his police ID and said, Everything that you did is a crime. You created a fake profile, used another person's picture there, defamed him, and almost ruined his wedding. By the way, the newlyweds could suffer serious losses, so it's not a joke anymore. You can choose, tell us all about it off the record, or later you'll have to come to the police station for interrogation. Who the hell are you? Christine said bitterly. It was clear by the look on her face that she was well aware of the nature of the whole situation and the consequences. What have I done to you? I don't even know who you are. Or do you have some problem with my husband? Vanessa interjected. He's not your husband yet, Christine reminded her. Well, okay, fine, I'll tell you. I don't care anymore. Christine turned out to be William's former neighbor. The children lived next door and so often played in the same company. And then Christine asked her mother to transfer her to the same school as William because she had liked him since kindergarten. But he paid no attention to the girl. No matter how hard Christine tried, he saw her as just a classmate, a neighbor, a pal, but nothing more. She had not even managed to become his close friend, but she didn't give it up. Every time William started dating someone, Christine felt almost physical pain and burning jealousy. She hated rivals with all her heart, but the relationship usually didn't last very long. When William broke up with another girlfriend, Christine temporarily relaxed. One day, her dream almost came true. They met by chance at the club. William was a little drunk. He was excited and surprised by the unexpected meeting with a classmate. They talked all night long. Christine tried very hard to charm her sweetheart, and she succeeded. It was partly because the girl had gotten to know the guy very well over the years and knew what he liked. You understand me so well. It's so nice to talk to you. Why didn't I notice it before? I mean, we've known each other forever, William wondered. The girl was unbelievably happy. 
Was it really true? Finally, she will be happy with William. William and Christine even met a couple of times after that conversation at the club. But they weren't romantic dates, but more like eh, hanging out with an old friend. But the girl was sure that soon William would realize that she was the best woman for him. No one would love him that much. And then he met Vanessa. Christine nearly fainted the first time she saw them together. William hugged the girl around the waist so gently and tenderly that there was no doubt that the guy was head over heels in love. Christine hoped that, as before, this relationship would be over soon. But recently, she found out that the love of her life was about to get married, and she made a desperate attempt to disrupt the wedding. She created a fake profile with these pictures and sent a tramp with a letter to Vanessa. She thought through every detail, but didn't think about the bruise. That little detail ruined her plan. She was already anticipating how she would comfort and upset William after his fiancé dumped him. Wow, what a brilliant plan. But what if Vanessa had called William and asked him everything? Michael asked. He would have said he was on a business trip, Christine said quietly. But would she have believed it after seeing the pictures? said Michael. Maybe I wouldn't believe it, Vanessa agreed. But she certainly would have shown him the pictures, and we would have found out that the pictures were fake. Do you really think William would forgive you for something like that? You're insane, Michael said. He would have realized how much I loved him. Sooner or later, he would have realized. And at the same time, he would know how you feel about him. You don't trust him. You think he's capable of betrayal. Vanessa thought for a moment. Actually, when she saw those pictures, she immediately believed that her fiancé was a bastard. And she even decided to cancel the wedding. If it hadn't been for that bruise, Vanessa wouldn't have even tried to find out the truth. But Christine is William to forgive William anything. I advise you to stay away from them, Michael sternly warned. I have enough evidence of crimes. If you decide to do anything else, I will start an official investigation. It's too late to do anything, Christine sighed heavily. Vanessa suddenly felt sorry for the poor girl. Vanessa was sure she would be mad at Christine, but she only felt sorry for the girl. Christine looked into Vanessa's face with unhappy eyes. You are so lucky, she said. I'd give anything to be in your shoes. Don't worry, I won't bother you again. I should go. The girl turned around and walked slowly into the print shop building. Michael, I don't know how to thank you, Vanessa turned to her friend. You figured it out so quickly. Without your help... I would have made a huge mistake. Christine is right. I would have made a scene and canceled the wedding. Even if we'd figured it out later, it would have been embarrassing. It wasn't hard for me. Christine made too many mistakes. She didn't think her plan through well. But you can thank me. I was going to ask you to do something, Michael said. Anything, Vanessa smiled. Tomorrow, throw your bouquet to my Audrey. I want to propose to her at your wedding. Is that okay? Absolutely. That would be amazing. Great idea, 